I want to say thank you for letting me come right into your space today. Today, we're going to wrap up the teaching called Seven Things to Do Every Day to Stay Spiritually Strong. I want to say thank you. Thank you for letting me be with you every day this week as I've really opened my personal life to you to tell you what I went through many years ago and what I had to do to reconstruct my life. It was a very hard time. But God showed me the seven things I needed to do every single day, and I just structured them into my life. It became fixtures in my life. And by doing those same things automatically every day with no emotion sometimes, just like brushing my teeth, I don't have to have emotion about brushing my teeth, I just do it every day. I begin to do these seven things every single day. And as I begin to do them regularly, day after day, day after day, day after day, month after month, month after month, it really began to strengthen my life. And now years and years and years later, these are still fixtures in my life. The people who know me and are close to me, they know the seven things I do every day without exception. I found them to be like medication for my life, vitamins to keep me on track spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And if you feel like you need something to help you stay on track in those areas, this series is for you. And I want you to order it. It's called Seven Things to Do Every Day to Stay Spiritually Strong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What are they? They're all in this wonderful series that comes with a study guide. It may be the very thing you need to give to a friend, to a spouse, to a family member, a co-worker, somebody at church that you know is really going through a rough time and they need something just to really fortify them. This is it. If they'll listen to it and if they'll do it. That's the problem. Most people don't do it. But if they'll do it, it will totally transform their lives or your life. I promise you. And the things that I teach here, they're just not hard to do and they don't take long, but they make all the difference in the world. So order yours today. Right now, we're also offering you my books, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, Volumes 2 and 1. How I love these books. Please order yours. If you don't have your copy of Sparkling Gems, order your copy right now. We'll get it right in the mail to you. They are loaded with teaching. Sometimes people say, well, I don't know how to study the Bible. Well, then study with me every day. This is a daily devotional. It's not so deep that you can't understand it. I wrote this for everybody. It's for the average person who loves the Bible, doesn't know how to study the Bible, wants to go deep and get something out of it. It's for you. That is for you. And every Sparkling Gems every day ends with questions, really good questions you need to ask, a prayer for you to pray, a declaration of faith, and the back of these are filled with an index that shows you all the Greek words, all the verses, everything. If you're looking for something, you can just look it up. It's all right here, and there's volume one, volume two, and each volume contains a thousand different Greek word studies. If you like the Greek that I share, on this program, you will just go nuts when you get sparkling gems from the Greek. It is amazing. And I want to say thank you if you're a partner. If you are a partner, my friend, you're really helping us touch people all over the planet. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, 21, the lips of the righteous feed many. That means we who are righteous, we have a responsibility. God's given us a responsibility to feed many. We have to feed them the Word of God. The lips of the righteous feed many. That's what we do in our ministry. That's our call. And when you join us as a partner, a partner is somebody who regularly financially supports our ministry, you join us in this task of feeding many, and you'll get credit for it along with what we're doing when we get to heaven we're going to receive a reward and we'll even be rewarded here on earth because God will bless us for our giving. But when you become a partner, we immediately send you a package of books as our way of saying welcome to the partner family. Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness and my book Life in the Combat Zone, How to Survive, Thrive and Overcome in the Midst of Difficult Situations. And if you need prayer, call us right now. Call the number on the screen or send us an email as soon as the phone rings or as soon as that email shows up in our inbox, we're going to put our faith together with you and believe for God to do a mighty work in your life. 
The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things beyond your imagination. We believe in prayer. And if you have a need, we'll call out to God with you and God will move heaven and earth to do what you need. I just believe that. So call us or write us right now. But today we're going to wrap up the teaching on seven things to do every day to be spiritually strong. So far, we've seen number one every single day, every day without fail, every day. You need to spend time with God in the morning. Number two, every single day without fail, you need to spend some amount of time feeding your spirit on other sources. Number three, every day without fail, every day, you need to spend some amount of time in quietness. That's going to be a real revelation for some of you because that will totally change your life. But then we come to number four, every single day, say every day, every day without fail, you need to spend some amount of time with those who strengthen your own soul. Next, we saw that every day throughout the day, you need to pause at intermittent moments throughout the day just to acknowledge the presence of God in your life. That is so simple to do, but it will totally change your mind and give you peace. Then number six, oh, this is so very important. This was the hard one for me. Every single day, say every day, you need to learn to say no to the things you're not supposed to do, but wait. There's one more thing, and it's glorious. You can do it every day, every moment, or every moment of the day, whenever you want to do it. It is so easy. It is a prayer. You can pray at any moment, and if you say it in faith, it can happen at any moment, and it will totally change you and will strengthen you spiritually. You say, well, what is it? I'm going to tell you in just a moment when I come back. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Okay, here we go. Point number seven of the seven things you need to do every day to stay spiritually strong. Are you ready? Here we go. Number seven, every day. Okay, say it. Every day. Every day without exception, pray to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. That's not hard to do. You can pray it right now to say, Lord, refill me with the Holy Spirit. I can just hear somebody say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean you can be refilled with the Holy Spirit? Of course you can be refilled with the Holy Spirit. You're baptized in the Holy Spirit once. But there are many, 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 many infillings of the Holy Spirit. I'll give you a couple examples. In Acts chapter 2, the 120 were in the upper room, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you know in the upper room was also Peter and John? But when you get to Acts chapter 4, Peter and John are brought before the religious leaders in Jerusalem who are interrogating them and really coming against them. And the Bible says, Peter and John filled with the Spirit. The Greek said, just then at that moment being filled with the Spirit. They were refilled. Well, hold on. They'd just been baptized in the Holy Spirit in chapter 2. Now in the beginning of chapter 4, they're being refilled again, refilled again. Then when you get to the end of chapter 4, they go to a big group that's meeting in the upper room where they're all meeting together, and they're all filled. It is another infilling of the Holy Spirit. There's one baptism and there are many, many infillings of the Holy Spirit. God wants to refill you with the Holy Spirit. You know, back in those days when I was going through my dark moment many, many years ago, a real time of crisis, I was going so fast, doing so much that I wasn't taking time to be replenished by the Holy Spirit. God wasn't holding out on me. I wasn't just making space and time to be refilled. God wanted to refill me. And because I wasn't making space or time for that, I became physically, I became spiritually, mentally depleted. And I came to a moment where I understood and really made a commitment. I built it as a structure in my life. One of the seven things I do every day, I do at the very beginning of the day, is I say, all right, Lord, it's a brand new day. I need a new infilling 
of the Holy Spirit. You have a wonderful study guide called The Infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's five lessons. You should go to our website, look it up. It comes with a great series. You should order this because I go through the many, many infillings of the Holy Spirit, which we find in the book of Acts. But today, we're going to open our Bibles and we're going to go to the book of Ephesians where the Apostle Paul tells the church of Ephesus that they need to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. And it is amazing to me because the church of Ephesus was a church that began in the power of God. Wow, it is amazing what happened in Ephesus. Paul came into Ephesus. He began to preach. You can read about it in Acts chapter 18. Then he came back in Acts chapter 19, laid hands on a group of men. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. They prophesied. Paul began to teach in the city of Ephesus, in the school of Tyrannus, which was right in the central part of Ephesus. People began coming into that school every day, six days a week, Paul teaching, 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 teaching. And the Bible tells us in Acts that God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Things happened in Ephesus that had never happened anywhere else. The Bible even calls them extraordinary special miracles. I don't know about you, but for me, all miracles were special. But what was happening there were extraordinary. They were special, notable miracles. And the Bible says all of Asia heard the name of Jesus from the city of Ephesus, a church that was born in the power of the Holy Spirit. But when you come to the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, Paul had to address some really difficult issues in that church. This church, which began in the power of God, were backbiting, they were lying, they were gossiping, they had malice, all kinds of bad behavior. Paul wrote that they were grieving the Holy Spirit and they were opening a door for the devil because of their bad behavior. Bad behavior and bad attitudes opens the door to the work of the devil. And the devil seems to have gotten loose inside this great church that began in the power of God. What did they need? They needed a new encounter. They needed a new infilling of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want you to see today. We're going to go to Ephesians 5, verse 15, where Paul addresses them. And this was the message I needed many years ago in my dark moment. I needed a new infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's so easy to receive. But listen to what Paul said in Ephesians 5, verse 15. Speaking to these very mature Christians, he says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. The word walk in Greek is the word peripateo from the word peri, which means around. The word pateo means to walk. You put the two words together, it means walk around, to walk. It even describes a person's lifestyle. And Paul now is telling him, hey guys, it's time for you to come up a level. You need to leave this level of carnality and you need to move up into a higher walk. He says, I'm calling you to walk circumspectly. The word circumspectly, the Greek word akribus, which means accurately. Walk carefully with your life, not as fools, but as wise. The word fools is the Greek word asophos. The word sophos is the Greek word for intelligence or wisdom or insight. But if you put an A on the front, it's somebody that's lost their mind. They've lost their wisdom. They're now unintelligent. And in fact, I would translate the verse like this. Here's an RIV of Ephesians 5.15. Quit all this foolish behavior and and stop acting unintelligent. Begin acting like the intelligent, cultured believers I know you can be. He knew what they could be, but they were behaving below what they could be. Then in verse 16, he says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Well, that verse is important to me. It was really important to me back when I was in my time of crisis because I felt like I was losing time. I was depleted. I felt like I was crashed. What was I going to do? I was losing opportunity. I was losing time. Wow. Well, the Bible says you can redeem the time. And the word redeem that is used here is the Greek word ex, agorizo. The word ex means out. The word agorizo means to buy. When you put the two words together, it means to buy something out, but really means to buy something back or to buy an opportunity. And here Paul's telling the Ephesians, hey guys, 
through your crazy behavior, you're wasting so much time, but you can turn it around. You can buy back your opportunity. You can buy back lost time, redeeming the time. So even if you feel like you've been losing time because of bad decisions or because you've been depleted, you can buy back that time. You can. God will supernaturally give you the opportunity to buy back time and to buy back lost opportunities. That's what the verse says. In fact, I would translate the verse like this. Buy back the time you've lost and make the most of each opportunity you still have. That's God's message to you today. Then in verse 17, he gives a specific instruction. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The word unwise is the Greek word aphron. The word aphron means to be unintelligent or brainless. He's speaking so directly. Put your brain back in your head. Quit being unintelligent. Quit being brainless. This is brainless activity the way that you've been living. Wherefore, be not unwise, brainless, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Well, what is the will of the Lord? If they're to know what it is, what is it? Please tell us what it is. He answers that question in the next verse. And when you come to the next verse, Paul says, Ephesians 5, verse 18. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This word drunk tells us huh, what bad shape the mature church of Ephesus was in. Because Paul says, be not drunk. The word drunk is the word methusko, which means to excessively drink alcohol or to be intoxicated. It is the very word for a drunkard. And Paul says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. And in Greek, it is a very strong prohibition. It literally means stop it, stop it now, put an end to this drunkenness. You're drinking too much. This is excessive. The church in Ephesus was drinking. It's kind of hard to argue with this. That's really what the Greek means. He was telling them to stop drinking to the point of getting drunk. What has happened to these believers? They've spiritually crashed. They shouldn't be getting drunk. Paul says, this is excessive what you're doing. Stop it. Stop it now. He says, instead, be filled with the Spirit. Oh, my goodness. This word filled is the Greek word plural. Listen to what it means. To fill to capacity, to fill to the full. And the tense indicates perpetual activity, which means it would be better translated, be being filled with the Spirit, which means we are to be continually being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is something that you can perpetually experience. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not just what happened to you some time ago. It can happen to you every day, every moment, if you will yield to it. Paul says, be being filled with the Spirit. That's why I say you can pray this every day. Please, Jesus, refill me with the Holy Spirit. It is God's command that you be refilled. Now, when you go to Philippians 1.19, we find something about the wonderful supply of the Holy Spirit. In Philippians 1.19, Paul writes this words. He says, For I know this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer. And listen to these words. And the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That word supply is the Greek word epikaregia. Now I'm going to read you from my notes and then I'm going to tell you more. This Greek word supply, the Greek word epikaregia, describes a lavish provision, an outrageously large contribution, a massive contribution. But what I want you to see is this. That word supply, the Greek word epikaregia, before the Bible was only used one other time. And Paul knew that. Paul was really smart. He borrowed it from that one example because it was so powerful. The word epikoreg is a compound of two Greek words. The word epi means on behalf of. The word koregia is the word for a choir or a chorus or a choreography. Well, in the ancient world, there was a huge choral presentation. They trained, they prepared, they worked, they were ready to take the show on the road. 
And just when it was time for them to perform, the director came and said, guys, pack it up. No more money. We've run out of funds. Pack your suitcases. Go home. Curtains have closed. The show is over. It was a horrible moment. You could say it was a dark moment for all of them. But there was a wealthy man who heard about it. A very, very wealthy man. He was a benefactor. He heard how they trained. He heard how they prepared. He heard how they were so ready to perform, but they ran out of money, and now they were despondent. And when he heard about all of that, he said, I can do something about this. I've got money. And he came forward and made a contribution for the choir. In Greek, that is the word epikoregia, epi on behalf of koregia, the choir. He made a contribution for the choir, and here it is translated as the word supply. It describes a lavish contribution. He gave so much money to that choir, they didn't know what to do with it. But when they received his contribution, his supply, it re-energized them, it empowered them to open the curtains again, to take the show back on the road. They were empowered to perform. And Paul says, when we're in a moment that it seems we have no more steam, we've come to the end of ourselves, that's a good moment. That's a moment to be refilled. That's when Jesus says, hey, I have exactly what you need. You need power, I've got power. You need a new infilling, guess what I have? I have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, like a wealthy benefactor, a wealthy contributor, steps forward and says, I'm going to refill you with the Holy Spirit. And in fact, when you come to Philippians 1 verse 20, Paul tells us how much he expected to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 20. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body. That word magnified, the Greek word megaluno, it means to be magnified, to be boosted, to be amplified. Jesus is going to fill me with so much power of the Holy Spirit that Christ is going to be boosted in me in this moment. Christ is going to be amplified even in my body. He's going to fill me to the full. Paul was refilled. When he was refilled, he was in a prison in Rome. I don't know where you are, but I know you're not in a Roman prison. Maybe you're in a dark place, a difficult place. It's time for you to say, hey, Lord, I need a new infilling of the Holy Spirit. Throw open your arms and let Jesus step forward. He is your great spiritual benefactor. He is the one who fills and he will refill you with the Holy Spirit and it will totally put you back on the road again. If you feel like your show, your life has been on pause, a new infilling with the Holy Spirit every day will give you the boost you need to go on. This is one of the seven things you need to do every day. Pray for a new infilling of the Holy Spirit. I'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to pray for you to have that infilling. God wants you to be spiritually strong now and for the rest of your Christian life. But to stay strong, there are certain things you need to do regularly. In seven things to do every day to stay spiritually strong, Rick opens these seven actions to you in a simple, powerful way so you can easily put them into practice in your own spiritual life. In this five-part series, Rick will teach you the importance of starting out every day with God, the importance of a daily intake of the Bible into your life, the importance of prayer every morning before you do anything else, the importance of having quiet time to reflect every day. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10, You'll be so glad you invested in this practical and powerful series. You can also order sparkling gems from the Greek Volumes 1 and 2. Each volume explores more than 1,000 in-depth Greek word studies, unlocking brilliant treasures within God's Word that will deepen your biblical understanding and show you how to live an intimate, uncompromising life with God. Get one or both of these valuable resources today. Sparkling Gems 1 for $40 and Sparkling Gems 2 for just $45. Don't miss this special offer, this series, Seven Things to Do Every Day to Stay Spiritually Strong and Sparkling Gems from the Greek Volume 1 or 2. 
Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My name is Joe Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you for watching today and thank you for your support. It's because of ministry partners like you that we're able to distribute quality Bible teaching around the world. And because of your support, we're not only able to air these programs by television, we're also able to translate Christian books into other languages. Because of your financial support, people in areas who have no Christian teaching of any kind, in places where getting a Bible is very difficult, we have been able to distribute millions of these Christian teachings around the world. The Bible says if you know the truth, it will set you free. And we have seen this happen over and over again. We have received thousands of testimonies of how these books we've distributed have dramatically changed people's lives. This is all because of the generous support of our partners, partners like you. Will you consider joining this vision today? Would you consider becoming a partner with us right now? When you do, your help allows us to reach more people quality Bible teaching from God's Word. With your help together, we can take the gospel of Christ both to the nearby world and to the ends of the earth. That's the vision. Your gift of any size will support these essential and urgent work of getting the Bible and Christian resources into the hands of people who don't have access to it. Please call right now and go online to renner.org. For your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives. Wow, we have had such a week looking at the seven things you need to do every day to stay spiritually strong. I learned these seven things because of a crisis in my life many years ago. And I begin to implement these seven things in my life. And friend, I know you can do them because I do them. I do them to this day every single day of my life. It will really help you if you'll order my series called Seven Things to Do to Stay Strong Every Day. Seven Things You Need to Do. If you'll do these seven things every day, you'll stay spiritually strong. I guarantee you. I'm a living testimony to the medicine that I'm giving you today. And with this series, there's a great study guide. The two of them together are so powerful. You know, there's such a powerful thing that takes place when you see or hear and read at the same time. And between the series and the study guide, it will really get this down deep into you. And I'm going to show you that you can do these seven things very easily. I do all seven every day. It just takes me minutes to do them all. But wow. What a difference it has made in my life, and it will for you too. We're also offering you both of my devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, Volume 1, Volume 2. My friend, please order these books. I know these books will make a difference for you, but I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you that Jesus is our great benefactor. Lord, you have the fullness of the Spirit without measure. And I pray for my friend today that needs a new infilling. They feel like they've come to the end. They're in a difficult place. They feel like things are on pause, have been suspended. Lord, I pray for you to give them an infilling of the Holy Spirit right now. Right now, they will part the curtains and put them back on the stage again so they can continue to perform. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 